Our guests today, our guests, I say, because we're talking to two persons, um, it's in a very interesting topic we are talking about, and we're talking about the Maroon Gatherings. But I'm speaking with uh, Ia Akila Haramuji. Have I said that correct, uh, Akila? Jaramugi. Jaramugi. Akila Jaramugi and uh, Caroline Meyer Toby. Am I correct with that? Yes, Caroline Meyer Toby. All right. Okay. Well, welcome, ladies and gentlemen. And uh, you all are both in Trinidad. And perhaps for the benefit of our listeners, can you tell us where you are, uh, what part of Trinidad you're in? First, um, Akila. Are you hearing me? Greetings, 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 and thanks for thanks for inviting me to your program, inviting us to uh, to your program. I am in Saint Anne's, Ponsamon, in the forest. I live at the reforestation project in Saint Anne's, where it's all about environmental conservation, protection, and rehabilitation. So Ponsamon is just ten minutes away from the savannah. But it is in the forest. <laughs> wow. And you, Caroline? I'm based in a law firm, Marin Company, in nowhere so as wonderful. Very, very much in the hot, dry, dusty Woodbrook, wishing that I were in the forest of Fonzamans. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we're talking about the Maroon Gathering. There is going to be a major conference entitled the Maroon Gathering, and uh, it's an academic conference as well. Um, give us a sense of, uh, first of all, for the benefit of our listeners who are unaware of the Maroons, can you tell us who are the Maroons, what are the Maroons? Um, and I know the Americans are also a part of the perspective, uh, the families of, of the Maroons. Tell us a bit about it. Akila? Thank you. Thank you, Vaughn. Maroons are self-liberated descendants of formerly enslaved Africans who established communities beyond the control of the enslavers. Maroons are Africans who resisted slavery, who ran away from plantations, who burned down plantations, who freed themselves and chose to live in the forests and along the swamps and uh, river and so on. So this is who we are today. We are descendants of these Maroons who resisted being enslaved. All these liberated souls that passed on, we pay homage to them. And uh, this we give thanks for. Right, 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 right. Now, what, how, what is the conference going to be like? Um, can you give us a, a sense of it? For sure. Our conference, the United Marine Indigenous Peoples Conference, who, um, which will be held from the 5th to the 9th of November, is the second conference we'll be holding in the Caribbean. The first conference was held in Dominica in 2021, where we reached out to our brothers and sisters throughout the diaspora, throughout the Caribbean, brothers and sisters from Jamaica and Suriname and St. Vincent and St. Lucia and Martinique and Guadeloupe, Trinidad and Tobago and Barbados. Anywhere there was plantations, you would find maroons because, you know, my people did not just subject themselves to slavery. A lot of my ancestors resisted and rebelled. So we called on all the maroons, known and unknown, to join us. And this was in Dominica paying homage especially to the Maroons who resisted being enslaved. For example, you would hear, you would hear about the Bella in Dominica and Farcel and Congo Ray and Cicero and Jaco and Kwashi and Mabuya and Jabba and Zombie and Mary Rose and Piti Jaki and Agatha. These are some of the ancestors, the warriors, who rebelled and who chose to go in the forest and live. And, you know, they did not yes. subject themselves to plantation life. So that was in Dominica in 2021. And this year, we call on our ancestors, we call on our 
our surviving descendants of Maroons throughout the Caribbean to join us in Trinidad this year. And we look forward to having them, you know, come mm. and tell stories, stories that were not told. We want to change the narrative. So we are bringing them here in Trinidad to tell stories about Maroon and Marinage in their country. Right, right, right. Caroline, do you find that younger people are um, receptive to to this, to the lifestyle? Um, I think it's shifting, it's changing. I think yes, in a short, in a short answer. I think that more and more people, more and more youth are very interested in exploring their ancestry. They're exploring alternative forms of communicating with the spiritual realm. Yeah. Um, so alternative forms of worship um, that is more congruent with the histories that they are becoming to uncover about yeah. their ancestry. Because some people have been exposed to the history and some people haven't been exposed to the history. Um, and some people know about it in passing glances about about the mafia, about slavery, about hiding of the religions. And some people, you know, have grown up within it. And so yeah. those people who have grown up in it, the youth have grown up in it, are now youth ambassadors, I would say. And there's a, a first network of youth, young adults, and older across the diaspora, across the Greater Caribbean, who want to know more about where they came from. And I think that's beautiful. I think that's absolutely stunning. Right, right, right. Well, it's important, you know, um, uh, as people are migrating and moving to the diaspora further, do you see this sense of um, need to understand uh, coming with them, traveling, becoming more apparent? Can you repeat that a little bit? Sorry, it just broke up a bit. Um, with the fact that there are so many in our diaspora today, you know, in England, in the U.S., do you see there's a need or a tendency for more knowledge to be gained or, or followed? With <clears throat> I absolutely do. I think right now um, the advent of social media has changed how we understand education and knowledge. And it's no longer coming from one channel or a few privileged channels right. that can keep up a, a, a floodgate, you know, um, right. a, a flood breaker. Right. And right now, I think the brutality of history is being exposed. Right. I think the hypocrisy of history is being exposed. I think all of the things that have been left out of history is being exposed. And people are hungry across the diaspora. Yeah, especially yeah. those living in and how 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 honest can we get here how honest can we get here yeah yes, yes can i can i be can i be honest here sure, sure. all right so people living in um colonial and new colonial but mostly colonial settler economies yeah you know imposed upon turtle island i think they're hungry for this right I, I, I agree. I, I, I quite agree with you eh? um, because people are, are wanting to learn more of their ancestry and where they have come from. So many stories. And with the way things are going today, um, it's one of concern, you know. Um, so, so Akila, what are some of the things that you see that will be of specific interest to you in, in, in development of the program? For me, like Caroline and others, it's about unearthing the truth. It's about bringing the truth to, to the people. It's about changing the narrative and making sure that history includes our people, our ancestors. Hence the reason why we are looking at restorative justice, restoring what was taken away from us. You know, look yes. our our spirituality. This is one we want to look at deeply. Yes. Our ancestors, the way they live, the way they pray, the way they appease their and their, their, their gods and their you know traditional ways. Right, right, right. This is what we want to bring. 
and for our team envisioning a connected maroon diaspora towards achieving a reparative future. And we see the need to be connected. Looking back at Marcus Garvey and looking back at all those elders who've been there before, yeah. it was about organize, organize, organize. As we go back to Papa Niza, I'm sure you will you know about Papa Niza. Yeah. He was one who would have been all over Trinidad, you know, praying and, and, and congregating and celebrating and appeasing the ancestors in shrines all over Trinidad. And then when you look at the Caribbean and we call in the Caribbean, we call on those ancestors, not just in the Caribbean, but in the Americas. Right, we say right. Marcus Garvey and Nat Turner and Patrick Lumumba and Walter Rodney and Malcolm X. You know, we call on them. We right. call on Queen Nani and Harriet Tubman and, and, you know, look at those ancestors and what they did. And we now are walking in their footprints. We now are standing tall on their shoulders. And this is why we take an oath to truth. We're going to unearth the truth and make sure our children are educated the way they're supposed to be. Right, right, right. This is, man, It's it's my skin is crawling eh, because it's just so fantastic to hear this. I mean, I grew up in Princess John um, on the outskirts of Sixth Company and the and I never knew anything about what your the company villages. I mean, it, how can a society grow like that? I mean, yeah. I mean, any any reaction? I mean, how can a society exist with such a history and one not being aware of it? If I may, Mama Kila. I, I don't. I don't. It's what it is, as I mentioned, you know, uh, colonial settler economies. It, it's a plural society structure that existed that was yeah. hidden, basically. Yeah. And it right. was hidden as a form of negation, as a form of denial, as a form of burial and oppression of the past, because the past is ugly. The past is really, really ugly. Yeah, and yeah. nobody wants to look at it. Yeah, 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 boy. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, we, we are we are on the way to making it a positive outlook, huh? Eh? And uh, I'm so glad that you guys are doing this, you know. In the question of, you talked about Papa Nisa. I mean, I grew up listening and hearing of Papa Nisa and hearing the adult folks, you know, talking about Papa Nisa, you know. Uh, what, what, is, what, is the, what is his history like? I mean, in, in terms of today, are people conscious of, of, the, of his contributions? Oh, okay. yes, definitely, definitely. Even in our uh, Orisha, Yoruba communities, we see him as a deity. We appease Papaniza. You know, we tell stories of Papaniza, the good stories, you know, that Papaniza was a healer. Yeah. He was a wise man. He was a farmer. He was, you know, he would help the midwives deliver babies. Yeah. Papaniza was the one you would turn to when you're not well. You would turn to when your marriage is falling apart. You would turn to when, when your baby breach and he had to rub the belly and turn the baby in the right way. That was yeah. Papa Nisa. If yeah. you need a spiritual direction, you turn to Papa Nisa. And again, he was encouraged to keep this tradition because this is another part of the history that was not told. 9,000 Yorubas settled in Trinidad during 1808 and 1840. Yoruba settled in third company and fifth company. So they were practicing the tradition. Right. You know, right. they were practicing Orisha. And um, Papa Nisa ended up being lucky enough and privileged enough to learn from them. And this is where today we can give thanks. We can we can speak in Yoruba. We can say a prayer. Yeah, we can say, Ore mi e o jaja for me. Edami ye o jaja for me. We can say, you know, we can sing songs yes, yes. in Yoruba and give thanks. And this is the blessings we got from Papa Nisa. Papa Nisa and my grandfather, Arnold Elliot, was two yes. cousins. My mom is Elvira Elliot. She's still alive in Six Company. She's 91. Yeah. Yeah. And so we give thanks. We get in our DNA, healing and praying and paying homage yeah. and keeping the energy alive of resistance and, and self-consciousness. And this is what was missing in our community 
the, in the last generation that gone. Right. So now we are going to walk the walk and talk the talk and make sure the young people understand themselves and tell the truth about our ancestors. Right. Right. Are, there, are there going to be special speakers? Tell us a little bit about, a little more about the conference, what the form it may take. Um, Caroline, uh, or either one, uh, any keynote speakers and some of the topic, you know? Oh, yes, definitely. We will be having us. We'll be having folks from IAT coming in and uh, Alexis and Nadish. She will be coming in and sharing stories about resistance and, and, and the story of IAT and all, you know, that is there for us to embrace right, right. outside of what the history books are telling us. Right. And then we have Mama G from Jamaica, Queen Nani of the Maroons from Charlestown. She will be here with us. We have Ambassador at Large, Cynthia Ellis, the Garafuna from Belize. And we have from Canada, we have uh, Sister, Sister Afua Cooper from Canada. She will be here with us as well. So this is where we are calling our elders. We are calling the, the ones who are out there keeping the revolution alive, keeping the liberation alive, you know, because our team is conscious collective liberation. Right. I can't feel liberated. I can't be liberated when my brothers and sisters are not. Right. So this is the time for us to do our work, the work of the ancestors that is assigned to us. It's all about destiny. It's not about you doing the work. It's the work doing you. Sometimes right. you want to know what is happening. How, you know, it's just moving you. Because yeah. this is the time. You can't sit still. You just have to appease the ancestors and follow the directions that is that are given to you. Okay. Uh, you want to add anything, Caroline? I'm not hearing you. Unmute yourself, Caroline. So we'll be having two days of a conference and that will be in, um, that's in prison. Am I right? Yeah. So that's yes, in prison and we'll have a smoke ceremony with the First Peoples, the Trinidad First Peoples. And the first two, two days will have um, themes from, I won't go into too much into detail actually, but right. we're going to have an embongi in support of the culture at Roy at Queens Hall. Well, in, not in the new Winifred, Winifred Atwell's um, room, but we, we're right. going to be outside and under the trees, under the stars, close to nature. Uh, and then we'll be going and visiting Trinidad and uh, understanding and connecting with the communities in Trinidad to the north, to the south, and going to the, the, the heritage spaces in Maruga, visiting the First Peoples as well. And then we're going to have some, you know, workshops and talking, getting deep into it, very, very right, deep right. Into, it, into it. And right. we're also going very proud to feature a, a, a region-wide youth panel, Indigenous youth panel from not just Maroons, but Indigenous peoples as well around the, other Indigenous peoples as well around the, the region. And Mama Kila, what am I missing out? The closing ceremony... Oh yes, yeah, you covered very well. Yeah. Right, right. It's, yes. Yeah, yes. It's, it's a it's a vast, vast, extensive, you know, um, outpouring. Well, and... it's it's a diplomatic engagement. It's a we indigenous peoples are nations. We have to remember that they're not just plural societies. These are nations that existed for millennia. You know, long yeah. before the, the the current nation and our. Uh, uh, coat of arms and right, everything right. was designed so right. this is what was here before um this was what was here in other areas that was destroyed and tried to it was they tried to destroy it but it was brought and this is the survivance this is a celebration this is the they tried to bury us but they didn't know we were seeds movements you know right, right. Asha, Asha. Asha. and what is beautiful Vaughn 
is that we pay homage to the first peoples of the Americas. Yes, yes. yes. So we call on the Waro peoples from South Trinidad who were there to yes. greet us. They came from yes. Euronoco and they came from Venezuela. Right, That's right. why you, hear, you have Indian Walk. It was once Indian Trail. Uh, We're right, going to do a right. smoke cere ceremony by the old Indian Walk government school. Right, right. And Princess Chung used to be called Mission. Mission, yes, yeah, because that was their mission. When they walk yeah. from Muruga, their mission is to pass through Princess Town, that's mission. Right. And then they will go to San Fernando Hills to meet up those who come in from Cedras right. and, and right. other parts and Bessini right. and so on. Yeah, yeah. 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 So we pay yeah. homage to the first peoples. Yes. Now, this is fantastic history you're talking about. Are there any areas of the school, the educational system today? This be, is being taught. Are you aware of it? There needs to be changes. So I'm sorry, Ia. Please go ahead. Oh, we have been going to schools uh, through the throughout the American community. We have been doing poetry competitions so they can write about Americans and 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 so on. We have been doing art competition. We did Miss and Miss American competition where they will learn about countries in Africa from whence we came. So Ghana, Sierra Leone, Senegal, um, uh, you have uh, Nigeria, Ivory Coast, Benin, because right here in St. Anne's, we have a Benin community in Belmont. We have the Rada community right. from Dahomey, right? right? So these are the things we are teaching to the children. And we also invite young people to come to the conference. Right. This conference and gathering is also... Um, managed together with uh, the University of the West Indies Gender and Development Studies. Right. So we have those young professors, uh, not so young as well, come in and uh, they will be recording this. We have rapporteurs. So after we'll be sharing our findings as, as our country and other peoples from across the Caribbean come with their stories. It's not just a space where we will just be talking and not record. Right. We need data. We need information to share. And as we we lived on, we created United Maroon Indigenous Peoples on pillars. For example, when we talk about Uhuru and Kapale and Gaya and Ujima and Mbungi yeah. and Liberty, these are the days we'll have different events by these different names. And they mean a lot to us. So those who want to come and follow us, you will know more about what these pillars stand for and why the liberation is important. Okay. All right. Well, listen, the tech, let's go over the conference again. It is going to be held on November 5th. Uh, Caroline, give it the information. Unmute yourself, Caroline. Yes. Hi, hi. Apologies. Yes, it's going to be held from November 5th to the night. It's the Envisioning a Connected Maroon Diaspora and Reparative Future. This is the second Maroon Gathering. And this will be at uh, Cruise Inn for the first two days. And there will be a public event, um, the Mbongi at the Queen's Hall. And the other days are, well, they're private, but yes. <laughs> Inv invitation only, but yes. <laughs> okay. And Akila, anything you'd like to add? Oh, yes. So anyone needing information, just check us out. We are sharing this information on Facebook. You could also contact me, WhatsApp, Akila Jaramugi, um, 1-866-689-7794. That's my number here in Trinidad. And also look out. Um, we have a United Maroon Peoples Facebook page. You will see some information there. Or just look at Akila Jaramugi Facebook page or Americans, contact the Americans in Trinidad, and you will know more. And it That's... is very, very important for your support, to, you know, on this gathering. Yeah. Right. Okay. There um... is also the United Maroon Peoples at gmail.com. And you can look at, contact the Institute for Small Islands for more information as well. United Maroon Peoples at gmail.com. Okay. Listen, ladies, I want to thank you so much for sharing this with us. And we here in Washington, D.C., in the United States, will certainly be um, uh, accepting the information 
and I'm sure they will contact you guys, you know. Um, is there a telephone number you may want to share? Again, I can share my number. Okay. 1-868-689-7794. All right. Thank you very much. I've been speaking with uh, Akila Jaramogi and Caroline Mayer Toby, uh, all from the Maroon Gatherings Conference, which is coming up on November 5th. This is Vaughn Martin, Caribbeana Continues.